What's going on guys? Reaper here and welcome to Reaper's Papa San Supply. So recently I decided to kick off a whole new series on this channel where I show off some bits and pieces of my personal collection because I figure what's the point of having all this stuff and just putting it in a box to never see the light of day again. Uh, so in this video we're going to take a look at some NBA uniforms, field gear, and film props from the movie We Were Soldiers. By now, just about everyone has seen We Were Soldiers, and let's be honest, it's a pretty awesome film. Now, there are some inaccuracies in the film, but I would say the execution of the film really far outweighs those inaccuracies you do see in the film. And let's be honest, We Were Soldiers is one of the bigger Vietnam War film productions that's been made or been made since. And one big reason for that is the lengths they went to to really show the other side, the NVA. And the amount of time and detail they put into the uniforms and props is just mind-blowing. I mean, seriously, look at this. That's freaking nuts, guys. That is awesome. Now, I acquired a bunch of these uniforms and props years ago back when we were trying to make uh, our own independent Vietnam War film. I really needed a bunch of NVA and VC items for that film, and at the time, uh, a lot of the We Were Soldiers NVA stuff was relatively cheap and readily available. Uh, you could get it from a few different websites and occasionally they would pop up on eBay for a pretty decent price. So I bought some of that stuff back then. And then later on, while we were filming, uh, a good friend of mine who owned a surplus store not too terribly far from us actually had a relatively decently sized lot of this stuff buried in the back of his store that he dug out and I wound up purchasing from him, which is awesome because there were some things there that I had never seen actually for sale that were related to a lot of these props and stuff that had come out of the production of We Were Soldiers. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the uniforms and some of the props that I have from the set of We Were Soldiers. What's really cool about all the NBA stuff that was used for We Were Soldiers is that there was a mixture of some original items that they had sourced and reproduction stuff. Now because the production was so massive and they needed a ton of uniforms and equipment and field gear, um, they actually had these uniforms specifically made for the production of We Were Soldiers. So. They had pants and shirts and various other items specifically made for the NBA side and this tan slash khaki. Um, these uniforms are actually quite a bit heavier than, say, these here, which is original Vietnamese post-war um, and a green. These also came from the set of We Were Soldiers, I assume, for background or extras to kind of fill in some of the gaps. Uh, what is really neat about this, and you can always tell if these were the ones made for We Were Soldiers, is these buttons are kind of more of a pink color. Um, also, I think that they were made by C&J Inc. Probably one of my all-time favorite things that came from the set of We Were Soldiers are the cast resin Chicom stick grenades, man. So, you know, I've got uh, 12 of these things, and they even reproduced and made the Chicom stick grenade uh, carriers. Now, this one I really like because it's super light. It's foam rubber, man, so it's it's not going to hurt you. It bends. It's pliable. Now, these, these suckers are pretty heavy and hard. I wouldn't want to throw them at anyone. Um, but I really love having these things, man. I've used them a lot, especially in reenacting and film and other things like that. The other neat thing is they also cast a bunch of these canteens out of foam rubber. See, it's, it's super pliable. I've got a couple of those, one, two, and then this here is 
I believe, World War II Japanese. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Uh, and then I've just got several other canteens that somehow I amassed from the set with all this other stuff. As you guys can see, I've got a bunch of pair of boots. Some of these are a mix of original Vietnamese, Chinese, and I believe French. Now, if you guys look closely, a lot of this stuff was definitely screen used. Uh, it's still got a lot of staining from the fake blood. Some of this uniform stuff here, you know, you can see some of the staining from the fake blood in it. Um, up there on the collar and whatnot. So a lot of this stuff, man, definitely came from the set. I mean, fake blood here on the Chicom stick grenade pouch. Uh, the Muset bag, the Chinese Muset bag still has a bunch of staining. The Pith helmets, which I've got a bunch of these uh, that came from it. This is a damaged one, which I found kind of interesting is that they marked it on the inside with two arrows. I have no idea what that's to indicate, maybe just facing forward. The other thing that I noticed because they needed so many of these is they took a lot of pith helmets that they gathered and sourced and they actually ha they painted these a tan slash khaki color because uh, you can kind of see around the edging there that it was originally green. Um, most of these are pretty well damaged, well used. I have no idea how many of these things that they had actually made and produced for the film or used I mean um, but yeah there's there were some of them that were still green they left green just a whole wide array of different things that they had used for the film some of them were still wearing sandals some of them were wearing boonie hats I think I got three of these from the set a couple of belts that came with it AK chest rig which I thought was really neat about this is that to, for filler in the pouches they used cut down blocks of wood to kind of fill it out to look like you know they were they had mags or whatever in them the other thing is that these shirts and pants still have a bunch of pocket trash there's a pair of earplugs in each pocket here I think this one has like sunflower seed bag in it and whatnot but this one this particular shirt is something I really, 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 really am intrigued by. Now, all of these articles of clothing that came from the set are all, they all still have the tags associated with, you know, numbers and stuff like this one here. And then various other ones I think are just sizing. But this one, this one I'm curious about. Now, I've never thought about this until recently, but I looked up the name because this is the only article that I have that actually has a name and a low number as such that isn't marking the uniform as a size. So I looked up actors that played NVA with the first name of Joseph. From what I could find, there's only two. One of them is Joseph Tran, which is actually the NBA prisoner that they captured when they first got into the Idrang. Hey, I got something here. I got a boy. Well, hell. There ain't no boy. Give me life. Give me life. And it makes me wonder if it might be this specific shirt might have been worn by Joseph Tran, the NBA prisoner, in that scene, or if it was a backup, possibly. There's another Joseph, a Joseph... Hugh, that also played in it, that was an NBA officer. Now, it's possible that maybe this was associated with them. For all I know, it could have just been an extra and a name that they put on it, but I find it kind of interesting and strange that out of all the uniforms I've either seen online via other people or collections or whatever, or out of the articles that I have, that that's the only one with a name on it and a number two, which probably indicates that it's... Uh, well, either Joseph number one or Joseph number two, or uh, shirt number one, shirt number two, something like that. However, if it does belong to one of those individuals, that would be super freaking badass. Now, something else that's really cool, guys, that they did because they needed a whole bunch of extra stuff is this pith helmet 
right here is probably one of my other favorites from the NBA We Were Soldiers props. I don't know if you guys can notice anything a little different about it from the video, but let's show you here. This thing is actually cast or fiberglass, which I think is super crazy cool that they, uh, they actually cast some of these pith helmets to have extras because they were probably going through so many or they just needed so many and couldn't source them all. And of course, how can I forget guys, I've actually got the certificate of authenticity for all of these props. I've got two different ones because it was two different lots that were purchased. Um, but they've got it marked as like for this one, for example, Viet Cong Army Outfit. This one here says NBA Uniform, you know, catalog number, catalog number. We were soldiers and of course the the actual seal signature icon pictures and premier props but that's something i'm super proud of guys i'm really happy that i purchased these things now you got to remember guys so back then finding a bunch of original nva vc stuff was actually still relatively difficult yes you could still get some of the more modern made uniforms that were still being made in vietnam and i believe still being made in vietnam now However, for the size of the production and the amount needed, uh, yeah, I can totally understand why they had to have an outsource and have a bunch of stuff made for production, like the uniforms, the pith helmets, you know, of course, extra canteens made out of foam rubber, which, you know, also for uh, stunts and making sure that nobody gets hurt and they're not getting banged around, and especially when they're falling and getting shot and everything like that. Um, it's, it's just super awesome to see how far they went to outfit almost every single person they could. I mean, when you watch those videos or you watch the movie and you see all the NBA running down the hill, or at the end, the battle scene, the fixed band net scene where everybody's just getting shot and tore down. and. They went through a whole hell of a lot to do this and you really don't think about how much goes into a production like that until you kind of see things like this that come from a film. Uniforms, props, grenades, I mean just everything they went through and God the amount of time to source all that, have it made, outfit people. It's, it's something I love. I mean, I, I watch behind the scenes stuff all the time. I love special effects. I love props. That stuff is just super cool, guys. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more stuff like this in the future, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, remember, stay frosty, ride or die, Reaper out.